many patients fail prostatectomy and radiation therapy. So many pa many patients will experience a rise in PSA, which at this point in time, unfortunately, means uh, patient stress amplifier. So it's very important to uh, separate those who are really at, at risk of developing metastasis and those who are not. And uh, to do this, we basically have uh, three factors. The first one, it is the uh, Gleason score. So if they had a high Gleason score to start with, eight or above. The uh, the timing between the, the surgery and the recurrence, if it's shorter than one or two years. But these are fixed because your Gleason score, you had it. And then there is a more dynamic uh, component, which is at which speed the PSA rise. And we use that under the form of PSA doubling time, although there are many ways to calculate doubling time. But at the end, what it means is that if your PSA start rising slowly, you should do nothing, no imaging, anything. Why? Because it's been shown in very large series that your risk of developing metastasis is very, very, very low. In contrast, if your PSA start rising rapidly, we usually say with a doubling time of less than one year, then you really should get more attention, modern imaging and treatment to be discussed, whatever. But I believe today there is a lot of over-treatment, uh, especially because some guidelines says you should do a PET PSMA when the PSA is 0.2. Yeah, but if it's a guy who was operated 15 years ago, who had a Gleason 6 and has a low PSA doubling time, you're going to harm that guy. So that's why I think PSA doubling time is very, very important topic. And uh, if you follow your patient, you will see that in those really at risk at some point, poof, it's going to start rising more rapidly. And that's where you should image and intervene.